that is problematic for us to operate as a civil society? Well, the first thing that I look at is the date of the tapes. It's remarkable that we are pulling tapes that you've gone into the archives and we are looking at the year 2000. I think people are entitled to evolve their thoughts over 18 years. Um, the second thing that I think is quite remarkable here is that we're talking about racial division and what sows racial division. I think the fact that every time I'm invited onto this network, I'm being asked to dispute another black person. The black community is broken up um, in general, and I'm, I don't want to partake in any of that. We're uh, just ending a weekend where 71 black people were shot in Chicago, 13 of them killed, and we're not talking about that. Instead, Wait, we're talking well, about old We're going to talk about all that. You have Donald a problem. Trump. No, we're not. I have a problem but that we're doing wall to wall coverage on two You have a problem with who you're appearing on this. No, I don't. Have a Candace, with you have a I'm problem saying, with who you're appearing no, on this segment with? I'm actually respectfully saying to him that we should both decline tearing apart the black community for the sake of television. And because MSNBC always invites me on to do that, I am declining to do so when our community is mourning the 71 people that were shot over the weekend. We need to stop this warfare and come together and talk about things that matter. And what is going on in Chicago is a bigger topic and should be a bigger topic on this network than what Trump said 18 years ago and whether or not it means that people change over 18 years, which, shocker guys, they do. Well, I'm going to have the professor respond, but I have to respond on behalf of myself. You knew what you were invited to discuss, and we're happy you're here. It's very important to me in this show that we have these conversations and invite a lot of people of all perspectives. If there's a problem with that, I think you knew what the invite was to, to begin with. Professor Dyson, your thoughts? Well, look, we're dealing with a person who has not only radically emboldened the prospects of bigotry in this country, the resurgent, recrudescent hate that he has articulated. If you can't beat him, coin him. So he opposes Pat Buchanan on the one hand when it's to his own political advantage. And then subsequently, when the real beliefs uh, emerge from Mr. Trump, we see that his vicious animus toward black people, gay people, Mexicans, Muslims, women and the like is a kind of cornucopia of hate that has been brashly articulated by a man of manifest lack of serious coherence, chaotic intelligence, and the lack of an ability to really express himself by not only pulling upon the strands of history, but refusing to take into consideration what's going on today. So I think in one sense, if we're going to talk about what, if we're going to be honest about Donald Trump, he has not helped uh, black people. He has not enabled African-American people to move forward. He's riding an, a crest and a wave of economic prosperity put in place by his predecessor, Barack Obama. He has refused to acknowledge the centrality of police brutality and unarmed black people being assaulted by people in this country. So the reality is, is that Donald Trump, while claiming through rhetoric to be for the blacks, what he has done is undermine the capacity of African-American people to exist in a country where it's not only about the economic facts and the wherewithal that we uh, com contend with, it is about the tone. It is about the rhetoric. It is about the atmosphere that has been unleashed here. And Donald Trump has done something very dangerous and destructive. He can't see the difference between an anti-fascist and a person who supports it. He can't see the difference between somebody who's against black people and who is for them. So when he draws false equivalencies between both sides, he negates the ability to say, look, I believe in rational civil discourse in America, but I take a side morally and politically. We are now 53 if I, if years to the date. for a quick second. 53 um, years. Let me finish this. 53 years beyond the date like of like the voting. Let me finish Candace, this. We'll go to, yeah. we'll go to the professor and then we'll go back to you, Candace. 50, uh, professor 53, Dyson, you can finish and then we'll go right. back to Candace. Here we are 53 years past the Voting Rights Act. We've seen the resurgence of an attempt to nullify and destroy that black vote. We've seen attempts to somehow uh, circum, you know, circumnavigate around uh, black political citizenry and agency. So all I'm saying is, if we're concerned about black people, we've got to be concerned about poverty, inequality, lack of access to education, plus the kinds of s sorts of violence that we see directed toward black right. people in this Great country. Candace, the go conversation. ahead. Sorts of violence as being directed towards black people. Am I black? I'm curious if I'm black, because I'm a black conservative. And I am not hearing anything that is said about the fact that about 25 white Democrats assembled to kick me out of a restaurant yesterday to throw water and to throw eggs at me because I am a conservative that supports Donald Trump. The very Bless same you. Donald Trump, okay? The very same Donald Trump that has not Obama. Obama did not do this it's because President Trump has been slashing regulations and it has brought this economy to a place it has never been at, okay? We have unemployment that's an all time low for both women. You brought up women, you brought up gays, you brought up black people. Unemployment Mexicans. is at an 
all-time mm -hmm. low across the board. You guys to refuse to acknowledge the truth that we are doing better. You want to talk about fascists? Antifa attacked me. This is an all-white gang that attacked me and attacked an all-black police force in Philadelphia, okay? And they claim to be fighting racism. How is it plausible, Professor, that you allow this to happen to your community because you've decided that because we are ideologically conservatives? You are okay with this. You're okay with the resources First of, of all, the Democrats. I haven't said a word. I, don't, don't cut me off. I haven't you said did. a word. You just said a lot of words. A I lot didn't of, say a actually, word. No, no, no. Was counting, I, I, I said nothing about count, you. Now you're cutting I said me off, nothing okay? about you. No, no, no. no, no. I, so I, I find what happened to you reprehensible, by the way. I still have to keep it going. Candace, Candace, we're going to take a pause. No, no, no. I didn't get to finish. I'm going to let you. for five minutes straight. You are attacking your I'm going to let you finish, but if you're calling out my professor, I have to give him time. So, Candace, go ahead. Liberals have been attacking conservatives, and you guys say nothing about it. Blacks were attacked yesterday, okay? And they were attacked because they support Donald Trump. Black support for Donald Trump has doubled since this time last year. You guys can try to pretend that he is pushing in a racist era in this country when, in fact, we know the Democrats are the racists, have always been the racists. The party's never switched. And you should know this as a civil rights person. You know the history. You know the people so Candace, under the hood of the KKK. Let me, let me respond. Candace, I'm going to give... And the give, party never switched. And Candace, shame, I'm going to give the professor a chance to respond. You should defend what happened to me yesterday and defend it, our community being attacked because we support Donald Trump because we understand that we have better okay. economic opportunities under him than we ever had in Obama. Let me, and let me shame say on this. you so for I'm gonna, in Obama. Candace, I'm going to give the, the professor a chance to respond. Under his administration, he allowed the bloodshed and Trump wanted to send the National Guard and the Democrats stopped him. I'm really so done with this. I'm done with this racist narrative. I don't want to have to narrative. talk over Let's people, talk but we have facts. to go Let's back and forth. Let's talk about and, the facts. And Candace, we're going to have to take a pause there. Couple things. You're you're making a personal attack on the other guests, so what I have to give them a chance to respond. Let me let me respond. First and of all, I, I also never have to said... say, and Professor, I'm going to go back to you. I also have to say mm. the topic of this discussion that we have tried and, and perhaps are, are failing on live television to discuss right. is Trump policy. The incident that you're referring to <clears throat> yesterday is, is not necessarily this topic. It's a Democrat uh, policy. Uh, and so we'd have to Waters, gather you see them more information. Go up to them. It's, so it's I'm going to go to the Professor. Policy. Professor, yeah, you me, get a chance me, to respond, this. sir. First of all, I never said anything about Ms. Owens. I never directed any animus, any particular rhetoric, any any conversation toward her. So first of all, when she say you allowed it, first of all, I'm not God. I don't control the universe or weather. I don't control the atmosphere, geology or geography. So I did not point these people toward you. I think it's reprehensible that any human being is, uh, uh, if you will, put out of a particular establishment because of her ideology. I think that that's problematic. So I did not suggest that. Number two, uh, yeah, you are black and I am black. But that doesn't mean that automatically we agree with everything. You don't of course have to not. Be. We should Let me finish. One another. Now, now, what I'm saying to you is that when you talk about me as disrespectful, uh, the, the, here's here's what's interesting to me. Uh, you have come on here and, like Donald Trump, reduce everything to narcissistic self preoccupation and articulation you're using big of words your. Here let me to finish. What you're saying I mean, what are you here. Saying right so now, now? now what I happens to Black America happens to you. So black people network. are reduced to what? Can you? Ari, can I finish my point? I didn't jump on her. We cannot do that. You're not allowed to do that. And then, of course, she starts crying. That's the other part of toddlers, is that every time you save their life, your reward is they cry, right? That's the reward you get for saving their lives all day. And uh, they want to stick their hand in the oven. You save their life. They don't know why. They start crying. That is really the job, which is why I think it's a tremendously tough job. And I never wanted to do it. And um, God has a sense of humor. Because now when people ask me what I do, I really am just sort of a glorified babysitter. I mean, now my job is to go to college campuses, which for those of you who don't know, college campuses are big, it's a big word for nursery school now, okay? And I have to explain to these 18 year olds why they can't do certain things because they're gonna die, you know? And they're like, why can't we have socialism? Because you're gonna die, we can't have socialism in America. We can't have that. And they ask all of these ridiculous questions, you know, why can't I go into the girls' bathroom? Because you're a boy. I mean, how old are these kids? You're a boy. But my mom says I can pick my gender. Well, you know what? Your, your mom is just really crazy. You can't just pick your gender. And this is my job now. This is my job to go into a room filled with adult students and to answer very basic questions. Like, there are only two genders. You cannot use that restroom. This is now my job. Full time. challenge people to really think about that. When we talk about the left and we talk about everything that they're selling and their movements that they have, you can really reduce it to things that you think might happen if you gave the keys to the world to a bunch of kindergartners, right? I mean, if we were in front of a bunch of kindergartners and you said, 
how do you think the legal system uh, should run? You might imagine a little girl putting her hand up, maybe her name's Megan. Yes, Megan, how should the legal system run? And she'd say, just believe women. Like, you know, like just hashtag believe women. I mean, what an insane concept. And I'd say, no, Megan, that's not a very good idea. We can't just magically believe women. And this, these are the sorts of ideas that are now coming out of people that are supposed to be learning in college campuses. Blanket rules like Believe Women, movements like Me Too, things that I have to explain to them why they're harmful and why this ideology is dangerous. And I particularly remember um, when I was babysitting Matthew and Grace, you know, kids sometimes they don't like their siblings, you fight, they fight the entire time. And uh, Matt, uh, Grace had this a really bad day with her brother, he was crying a lot, and she sort of just came to me and she said, you know what, I don't want a brother anymore, right? And I had to explain to her that that's not really how it works. You can't just get rid of your brother because you don't like him. And now we have people on the left that think that they can just get rid of the president because they don't like him. We're just going to impeach him because we don't like him. I mean, this is crazy stuff. And you have to explain to them why that's illogical and why that's wrong and why that is not the way that things work. This is my job full time. And you'll start to realize this now when you see these, these, these leftist Kansas and these leftist politicians, um, when they hit the stage, they're starting to really hammer down the kid stuff, right? I think um, we're seeing some candidates say that we should lower the voting age to 16, 16 years old. So what they're essentially saying is um, we need people whose brains aren't developed so we can sell our ideas, right? That's really what they're doing. People that are not fully developed, not mentally mature, um, and people that have no real life experience, of course. They, don't, they never had a mortgage, they never paid bills. They actually have lived in this utopia where everything is free because they've been living with their parents. And they wanna lower the voting age because that's the best way for them to sell these really bad ideas, like socialism. And we're seeing more and more that as a means um, to control our rebuttals, they're putting children in front of them, right? So you saw this, you probably saw this a couple of, you saw this with David Hogg, you know, he was all, he was all over the news um, after that horrible incident happened at, at the Parkland shooting. We saw it a couple of weeks ago at uh, the United Nations. Did you guys watch that, uh, Greta, Greta Thunberg? Did you guys know, how dare you, right? Okay, <laughs> how dare you? And then of course this goes viral and they say, you can't say anything. You can't say anything at all about environmentalism because now we put a kid here so you can't attack the bad idea and they think they're on the good side. And I'm like, you've convinced a bunch of kids that they're gonna die in 10 years and you feel like a good person. I mean, really? And I say to these kids, guys, just so you know, I mean, and, and by the way, I'm like, I love the environment, I'm a person that recycles, um, but just so you know, every, about every 10 years, they tell us that the world's gonna end. When I was 